defeated. The odds are in our favor. In five, four, three, two, one. Press the attack! Too slow. Tracer, no! Behind you! You know what time it is. Reach for the sky. With the arrival of the 222 lock in both the Overwatch League and competitive play, it's useful to refresh our memories on some common compositions that fit into this format, especially after more than a year of 3-3. One of these, and possibly the most beloved of all the team compositions, is Dive. Dive usually comprises fast-moving heroes designed to focus down and take out one enemy hero before the fight even starts. A Dive composition, for example, would be Winston, D.Va, Genji, Tracer, Lucio, and Zenyatta. It's not that difficult to understand how and why this comp works at a basic level. But how do you counter it? Well, one of the ways you can do this is something called a counter dive. Essentially, you match the opponent's dive composition and allow them to dive your tanks, for example, while keeping your squishy heroes like the DPS and supports safely away from danger. Once the opponents have used their cooldowns, you are now free to use your own cooldowns to swing the fight back into your favor, and hopefully catch someone in the process. This is especially potent against Dive as many of its heroes such as Winston, D.Va, and Tracer rely heavily on their movement abilities to escape from danger. Seems simple, right? Let's try looking at an example from the recent Team Canada tryouts. Before we begin though, it is important to note that the definition of dive and counter dive we have given here is very basic. And while they do apply to most variants of dive compositions and engagements, they do not necessarily apply to all examples. The one we have chosen here just happens to be a very recent example in the context of the 222 lock. Let's take a look at the teams we have here. Both teams are running dive with some differences. We'll use the same team names as the broadcast, Group 1 and Group 2 respectively. Group 1 has Sombra Genji Dive, while Group 2 has Sombra McCree. That's something that you don't see very often, because McCree doesn't really have the same mobility that Tracer or Sombra have, and therefore kind of forces his team to play close to him to protect him so he can keep putting out damage. He does, however, have one important ability, his Flashbang. A well-placed Flashbang can one-shot a Tracer, and kill most squishy targets with a bit of coordination. It can also stop a Leaping Winston and even the threat of a flashbang can force a Sombra to translocate away, meaning the time needed to charge EMP increases. As you know, Busan Mecha Base has two entrances to the point that are important to control as the defending team. The third entrance below is generally not favored because of how small it is and the pillar in the middle of the walkway. Group 1 has their EMP, and want to use it to engage first and win the fight off that. Their plan is to EMP Group 2 right as they come out the door and follow up with Coalescence to dish out massive damage. As Acadia, who is playing under the name 12, sets up for his EMP, he notices Sure 4 all the way at the other door. This looks like a perfect scenario for Group 1. Now, there's no chance that Sure 4 will flashbang Sombra mid EMP and cancel it. Crimzo calls the engage first with his Coalescence as they see Agility Sombra has been forced to translocate away by XQC, and Acadia follows up with EMP. As Aqua leaps away from the oncoming engage, Mofin throws his bombs at the supports hoping to zone them away from the fight. However, this does not have the intended effect, as Zolik drops a sound barrier. But now we can see what Group 2's plan actually was. With the whole of Group 1 now committed to the dive onto Group 2's tanks, Sure 4 has free reign all the way on the other side of the map to use his Deadeye, with no one to stomp him. XQC used his jump to follow up, 12 translocated in, Mofin was hacked, and Banny did not have sound barrier. Furthermore, Group 1 committed all of the resources they had into the fight, with Azir even using his Dragon Blade before Agilities responded with the EMP. So how could a fight started so well have swung so fast? Before, we mentioned that Counter Dive is about making your opponents use their cooldowns first so they are committed to the fight, after which you can use your own cooldowns. Here, Group 1 committed all of their movement abilities into getting into the fight and following up on 12's EMP. However, that left them in a vulnerable position, and if they did not get killed soon enough, Group 2 would have been able to come back quickly with their own ultimates. Another part of this is setting yourself up in a position to capitalize on the enemy's dive. Sure positioning is what really allowed this play to happen. While the tanks playing forward and catching the EMP allowed the supports to avoid being EMP'd themselves, which in turn allowed Zolik to buy more time with his sound barrier. With the advent of 222 and potentially more dive compositions, expect to see more of these ideas and plays being carried out. This has been a case study in counter dives from behind the action. Will you be using these ideas in your own ranked games? Let us know in our Discord channel or the comments below. And now, a message from our sponsors. This video is brought to you by Insights.
an all-in-one platform to elevate your team performance. Simply play, review, and strategize, all in real time. See why the pros use insights to organize and review their gameplay. Get your free account today.